Welcome everybody, I'm John Zadar and this is February 22nd, Tuesday. You're watching On Top and Hot. This is a show where I like to look and analyze OTC stocks, penny stocks. I go looking through the day for things that have potential, strange news, peculiar circumstances, runners, whatever it is, and then I bring them to you. And I got a bunch I want to share with you today, plus a little extra information, just just to keep you in the knowing. So, without any more hesitation, let's jump to it. As you would expect, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website simply because it's always current. It's never outdated. If I need information on an OTC stock, why would I go to Google when most of what they're going to show me is not current. This is always current. Why waste your time and frustrate yourself? Just come here and make it easy. So we are over here now because I want to not show you some stocks today that ran. <laughs> Seriously, I'm going to show you some stocks that did run, but I'm going to show you some of the top runners that for whatever reasons I couldn't find were big runners today. What I do is I come over here to current market and this brings me the most active. Then I click into advances here and I look at them all. Now I've already done some highlighting here. So this is every single stock on the OTC market. This is the biggest gainer. That one right there and all these double diamonds are expert markets. They've been pulled off the market because they're late on filing. So we can't buy them or sell them. So it really doesn't matter. All the rest, the pinks and the QXs and the triangles, the limiteds, we can buy all those. So they're all in the game. Now I come over here looking for the stocks with the most trades. You can get the most volume. You can see who's selling the most shares. You can see who's getting the most money. But I want the crowd factor. I want to know how many people are trading these things. Now, I can't say that 99 trades is 99 people. But I can say it's probably more than two, three, or four. <laughs> there's definitely going to be a crowd there. So I look for these numbers because I figure there's a reason they're all there. <laughs> not always. And that's why I'm not showing you these yellow stocks. This is GCGXD. The D on the end means they're in change. The ticker's changing, the name's changing, something like that is changing. And that normally happens when there's been a reverse merger or a change of control, something like that. Now, this stock hasn't been trading hardly at all. But today, they had 321% gains. Whoa, it just took off, right? And we got 99 trades. So I figure once people saw this thing starting to run because it hasn't been moving at all, people started jumping into it, but that's not the full story. The full story is there was a reverse split today, a one in six. So for every six shares you had, they were going to give you one new share worth six times as much. And what they did is they kicked the price up 600%. Well, we're at 321%. You know what that means? That's right. It got kicked up to $3 and fell down to 321. It has fallen from 600% gains at the start of the day down to 321%. So all these people who did not do their DD and did not see that there was a reverse split and just thought, whoa, it's off and running, they just probably lost 40% of their money. Bad, bad, bad. Next one down is JFIL. Now, JFIL had 561 trades. There's got to be a good reason why this thing is running. She did 3.5 million shares, 130% gains. I dug around. I went to Google. I went to Twitter. I looked everywhere. The only thing I could find is she has a very low float. It's about 8 million, so that's a great float, and she had good technical setups. That was on Twitter. Lots of people talking about this setup on Twitter and, well, I don't know, 561 people without a real catalyst, just low floats and technicals. And by all means, there's nothing wrong with playing technicals. These people up here should have been watching the technicals. That would have been good. Just don't watch the initial bounce. These people obviously got in for the technicals and it paid off because there's no news, no filings, no catalyst, just a low float and it did have good technicals. The next one is Trend, T-R-E-N. Now, Trend did 36 trades. That's not as many as I normally will look at, but that is enough to consider. She did only 7,000 
shares today. That's nothing. I wouldn't consider that at all. But she did 107% gains. So I dug in, I went to Twitter, I went online, and the only thing I could find, and I'm only presuming here, there is a coin out there, a crypto coin called Trend. And everybody said that Trend is going to run. Well, <laughs> I mean, there's no news on this. There is nothing. This thing is ice cold. And yet, that's the only thing I found is that trend, the coin, was going to run. But they kept saying just trend, trend, trend. And I think people got confused maybe because this thing got a good jump, 107%. Now, what I am going to show you, this one only had 27 trades today, but it has legitimate calls for running. And I think it's going to continue running with the way circumstances are right now. And I'll explain that to you. She's only got 155,000 shares today, but she did 71% gains. This is AEPT. Now, AEPT is in the oil business. American oil, and that's why I'm showing it to you. American oil is now on the front lines with everything going on in Russia and them taking control of oil, the Arabs pushing the prices of oil, oil at $97, $99 a barrel now. It is just, it's outrageous. And you got Biden who pretty much shut everything down here to go green. Now, I believe he spoke today on TV, and I think he's actually reversing something when it comes to oil. So these are on the front line right now. Oil companies in America, which I never look at, I really don't, folks, but this is a matter of timing. The spotlight is gonna be on them again. And this company is into oil. Now, what sort of relative volume was there today? Well, she normally does 9,000 shares. Today, she did 178,000. So we're talking, geez, I don't know, about 25, 26 times as much volume. And what is her share count? Oh, that's pretty good. I didn't know it was that low. We got just about 13 million shares in this oil stock. What is their financials? Are they making any money? They actually are. Let's come down to quarterly. That was $662,000 and whoa, they're picking up fast. This is quarterly. This is three months. They got $703,000. You take those three zeros, put that behind there and you can see that's a big jump from the last quarter. Boy, that's like seven times, 700 times the revenue. This may be a company to watch. Like I said, I don't watch oil, but this one's making a move and it's got strong revenues to back it all up. We got any disclosures here that may give us some insight? Uh, 2020? No. Okay. Really, I already know what's going on here. The news here covers, oh, about uh, eight months of 2021 and last month of 2022. And you can see here they're making all sorts of deals. They acquire three oil and gas operators in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, uh, close those three, signs an agreement to acquire energy service company, uh, signs another agreement to acquire a second Appalachian Basin Energy Service Company, completes the acquisition of unlimited energy services, then completes the acquisition of Apex Energy. I mean, boom, 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 boom. It was just a machine gun there, right? Lots of oil. And that's it. There's nothing new. That came from January 3rd. I looked around. There's nothing happening right now. They've just got a lot of oil interest in America. And anything oil in America is going to be getting, call it sympathy plays, call it highlights, whatever it is, they're going to be getting attention. And this one got 42% today. And there's nothing else to show you but the chart. So let's go look at that. So the charting platform we're going to use is Think or Swim. If you don't have a charting platform, <laughs> you do need one. Get one. It's free. You can go over to TD Ameritrade. Just sign up for a free account. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use Think or Swim just like I do. So this is AEPT. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart. She hit a high back here in July of 31 cents crossed that 200, went sideways for a few months and fell down to this low bubble of just over six cents, almost 500% down. Now that is a huge drop and I really don't know what it is. It could have been market sentiment, may have been the company, I don't know. But if we draw a line 
from where it fell from, right there. And I didn't even look over here. We just drew a line. You can see, all right, I'm a little off here, a little off, but you can see that's where it came back to. And that is normal. When you see a big drop like that, in many cases, it will come back up, especially if it was unsubstantiated. But this, that is about 45 days. So this is a little surprising to have it happen now. But like I said, there is pressure now on the oil markets. All the American oil industry should start getting lift because of all the attention being paid to it. And that is a good lift. Let's come down to the 20 day, one hour. All right, you can see how it, there's a line here and it fell, went over, went up, but it's kind of tough to see. So I'm gonna turn on this bar over here, the Heiken Ashi. That fills in the gaps. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And that's, it's more than just filling in the travel. You can actually see, like, that's a perfect example. See the big bar? Smaller, 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 smaller. And then, then it changes color. That is normally, the smaller it gets, it means that it's about ready to change trend. So I like to use that. It's kind of a cheater code for me. So you can see she was pretty much just going straight across here. Do, 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 bouncing in that channel until today. Hit a high up here of uh, 12 cents. Started down here at 7 cents. So when she got up there, she was almost at 90% gains. She's finished the day down here. Down there at 42%. Now, it looks to me like we are over. If I draw a line from where the surge started, yesterday's close to that high. Okay? And then I find the middle. Now, I'm just eyeballing it, but it looks to be about right there. So, she finished above the 50% of her surge. 50% of that surge is right there. I expect a big climb to fall down to here. Maybe bounce off, maybe hold on. If it's strong, if it was a weak surge, had no real reason, it will come below there and then start to fall all the way back down. So I love to see anything above this line. So even though it fell, it is above the 50. That looks good to me. MACD is strong with a pullback. RSI was very strong again with a pullback. Let's look at the five day, five minute. All right, let's get rid of some of those lines here just so we can start fresh. All right, so we had our 50% line somewhere about right in there. Yeah, about there. That's about the only one we really need. So I would anticipate, I always do though, I would anticipate the price to fall down to that 50%. Now I've just spitballed, so it's not gonna be 0973. How do you find the exact? Well, find the start here. What did it close at yesterday? Maybe 0726. Subtract that from the high bubble. Then cut it in half, right? You're gonna split it in half and add that number to this number. And that'll put it exactly where it needs to be. Wherever that is, I expect it to fall to that point. And if it's strong, I expect it to maybe dribble under it just a little bit and then go back up. But we watch for it because if it gets too far away from that 50, it's going to start dribbling down and it's just going to fall in most cases. So this one may not have any current catalyst of its own, but it is caught on high seas. The tide is rising on the oil industry in America. Keep your eyes open for news. Keep your eyes open for stocks running in the oil industry. They don't need a catalyst. They're just in the right place at the right time. And all vessels on the water will rise. All right, this next stock, to be totally honest, it doesn't have a catalyst. That's what I was searching for, stocks that had catalysts, and I almost went by this one, except I went through its news. And when I read the news, I said, well, this may not have catalysts, but it definitely has potential. And I'll expound on that as we roll along. She finished the day at 50 cents, 72% gains. She's on the middle tier of the QB, so they have to audit their financials, more trustworthy, more transparent. They have a verified profile and a transfer agent, so they look good. So this company, they make high-tech telephones. And you say, I've never heard of them. I haven't either. When I jumped into the news, I saw that their stuff isn't junk. Matter of fact, their phones can do stuff that other phones cannot do, including Apple. Apple cannot do what their phones can do, and I think that's going to make their phones a step above others. And I'll get to that here in just a second. What was the relative volume around the company today? Today she did... 
140,000 shares normally does 21,000. Now let's see if I can get the math right this time. That's about seven times as much volume. I said that last one was 25, it was only 15. Yeah, it finally caught up with me. What are the financials in this company? Are they making anything? Uh, all right, she's a foreign company. You see that F right there on the back? That stands for foreign. And a lot of these foreign companies originate in their own countries and that's where they file their financials. And they just don't get over here to the OTC market. So it's not that they don't have them, they're just not here. So we'd have to do some more DD to find them. And what about disclosures? Anything over here? Well, again, we don't even get their financials here. They're gonna be in their own country and we've got nothing else to look at. So all we have is the news. Now, you can see the most current piece of news we have is November of last year. So there definitely is no catalyst going on. However, I went through all of this news and it's pretty impressive. They talk about revealing their smartphone that is able to connect to low earth orbit satellites. This is what makes their phone unique. Remember the big old bulky phones that could connect to satellites? Well, these are little smart Android phones that can connect to satellite, connect to Wi-Fi, actually connect to marine frequencies, UHF, VHF. Do you even remember what those are? They came on the old fashioned TV sets. They connect to Bluetooth. They have cameras. They do everything, but they can connect to satellites. So if there's a tornado, a hurricane, and everything is wiped out, no electricity, no towers, you've still got service. You have service anywhere on the earth because low orbiting uh, satellites only go so far up in the sky. So latency, the time it takes for the information to travel there and back is not a problem anymore. Not like with satellites, way, way, way up there. So even when you don't have a Wi-Fi signal, even when you're not getting a cellular signal, you can still get a signal from the satellite under all conditions. And that is going to make this a hot product. They sold 4,000 phones in uh, September. Then they got a double order for 8,000. Uh, they're expanding their market rapidly. Now I got two pieces of news that give us some insight because they got a lot going on. The company tells us on September 2nd of last year that they are pleased to announce the final stage of launching their X7U product, the one of a kind world's first global satellite Android phone. Satellite communications are based on a network of satellites that are either fixed above the equator or in a low earth orbit. The X7U can connect to the Iridium network of the 66 low earth orbit satellites which provide 100% earth coverage. It doesn't take a lot. These satellites are about the size of an office desk and they cost about $10,000 a piece and they put them up there and they can do things like give us internet anywhere we are on the planet and charge you seven dollars a month for it and it doesn't matter if you're out in the middle of the woods the middle of the desert or the middle of the ocean you're gonna get your service there are approximately 1.5 million satellite phone users in the usa alone and those people use outdated phones because there just isn't great service there's not anything been set up for it and these people are breaking that market imagine now how many people you know, satellite phone users are a certain breed. I'm not quite sure, you know, what kind of people they are, but how many people do you know have a satellite phone? But if you could just get a regular old Android phone that worked on Wi-Fi, worked on cellular service, and would work on satellite when you got out in the middle of your boat out in the middle of the ocean and your engine broke and you couldn't paddle your way back, you'd be real glad that you had that satellite service. And that's what they got going for them. And not that I'm gonna go through it all, but I'm gonna give you a glance there because you can freeze frame that and see. This is the features that they've got. And I mean, they've got everything. You know, they've got flashlights and cameras and they tell you all the different ways that they can connect, the different sensors, the speakers. I mean, it's, it's a great phone. So I think this is gonna be a good seller. I don't know the price though. Nowhere here did they tell us the price. And the next piece of news we got, 
This came out October. The company is pleased to announce that it has started FCC and CE certification process for its new X7U multi-mode mobile device with integrated cellular, satellite, and digital radio communications. That's the one me be talking about. The previous product of the company, the Android satellite smartphone Explorer X7, had received authorization from the United States Federal Communications Commission in 2019. And that's really all that's here, folks. They, they've got more going on, but it's really about getting these phones out there now. The low Earth orbit satellites are in place. As a matter of fact, they're going to start using these for a lot of things. You're going to be able to get your internet service off of a low LEO is what they call them, low earth orbit satellites, LEO. You're going to be able to get your internet anywhere you are, anywhere you're at on the earth's surface. You're going to get it and they're going to want to charge you no more than say $7.99 a month. What a deal. So we're looking forward to a lot of stuff with these LEO low earth orbit satellites. And I think this phone company could have a hot product here that everybody would want regardless of their situation. It would just be nice to know you could always connect regardless how far away you are from anything or anybody. Let's go take a look at that chart now. My first impression, that's a Halloween chart. This is ATCLF, six month, four hours. And look at all that blood dripping. And that curdling drop right there, <laughs> that's horrible. Really, we went from $1.44 all the way down to just over a penny. Oh my God, what a fall that was. She did come back off of that and you can see she's been falling ever since, but never got that low again never we're at 50 cents right now she had a jump here december 1st and i haven't got a clue what happened december 1st the news we were looking at only went to november so i just don't know whatever it was it went for days and it pushed it up over the 200 here that was its first tag hit it a second time barely got on top of it is riding it down like a roller coaster and it got picked up by the 50 again who has brought it over here to its launch and again it's launched without a catalyst let's come down to 20 day one hour so there's the 50 the yellow she's just going up and over up and over she wasn't going anywhere until today nice power you can see it's all right there look at that it's looking great but without a catalyst who knows what's going to happen now we had a jump first thing in the morning of about 20 percent a slow steady climb real slow and then about 1 1 30 in the afternoon she decides to just pounce just for no reason she went from 36 to 56 just like that and she fell back to roughly 46 so we got 50 percent of that gain right there she took it right in the center so that's beautiful setup. I just don't know what to do with it. All I know is that this company seems to me to have potential. It's definitely worth the DD. They've got a product nobody else has. Yeah, they have phones out there, but nobody has a Android satellite phone that can connect to the internet, connect to anybody, anywhere, from anywhere. I love it. I think it's gonna do something, but it's definitely worth your DD. No catalyst today. What will it do when it gets a catalyst? If you watch my videos, you've seen me talk about MXMG this last weekend. It was one of the top seven gainers on the entire OTC Market Friday. And here she is on Tuesday running again. She finished a day at 009 with 38% gains. This is the Maxima group. Now I want you to stop and think about that price. 009, that is almost a penny. That is an excellent buy-in price, folks. Excellent. You buy any stock at a penny. How far does it have to go to double? Two. That's right. The very next number. And to triple? Three. Quadruple? Four. What if you bought it at four cents? It would have to go all the way to eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Before it doubles. Buying it on the one, that's 100, 200, 300, 400 percent gains. For four cents, you'd have to go all the way to 16 cents to get 400 percent. So whenever you get an opportunity to buy on a one, it's just faster gains. Definitely. This company's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent, so they look good. Now, they are a self proclaimed shell company. That means they're not making any money right now, and everybody knows that we're just waiting for something to happen. And as I like to always say, something's happening, but they haven't really declared it. 
we're having to extrapolate it and I'll show you what I'm looking at. What was the relative volume around this company today? Eh, roughly twice, double from 230 to 418. And our share count? Not bad, not bad. We got 43 million in the share. We can definitely work with that. Her financials, uh, we got nothing on the annual, nothing on the quarterly because she's a shell company, right? We should have remembered that. And her financials, uh, we've got her financials on time, but there's nothing current here to look at. So all we have is the news. And guess what? There's no news, nothing at all. So I went over to Twitter and lo and behold, here on February 18th, just a few days ago, MXMG, new merger, Sonarco Life. And this one, MXMG, $2 billion in assets. A merger with a company with $2 billion assets, you'd think this would be somewhere, right? So I dive deeper into it. Now this is the website for Sonarco. And I've looked at it. The company invests in artwork and real estate, which they say down here is because they're tangible assets that appreciate. They also are investing into companies like a holding company. They are like an accelerator or incubator. They find small businesses that are not publicly listed and they help them to grow and meet their full potential. Now, this guy says this company has $2 billion in assets. That's not exactly right. They have $2 billion under their management. I don't know what they're worth, but all their customers, all the people together, they have $2 billion they're working with. It's kind of like saying all the money we put into a bank belongs to the bank and that they can count it as their assets. No, not true. They're just managing our money. Now, the important question to really ask here, though, is how do they come up with the fact that there's a merger? There's no news, there's no articles. I could find no announcement of it. So what makes them think that there's a merger? Well, I'll tell you where that came from. This is Maxima Group's disclosure. It's their financial filings. And this tells us everything that they've done, but there's no mention here about any deal with Sonarco, none at all. But right up here at the top, contact Sonarco Life, website Sonarco Life, Interesting. And then if you take this address right there and you come over here and look at the address that they have on the books right there, compared to the one we just looked at on that disclosure, not the same. You always go by the information on the documents. Don't trust what you find on the web. That can be outdated by a long shot. When you find information changing on documents, things have changed. Something is happening with Sonarco and this company. Absolutely. Even though it hasn't been told to us, it is occurring. And something else that is occurring that most have no idea about because again, this isn't in a press release and it isn't even in a filing, though it is a filing. This is a certificate of change pursuant to NRS 78.209. The only place you find these is in the states where they actually register their companies. And this one came from Nevada. So you actually have to go to the state of Nevada site log in as a member and ask to see these or somebody puts them up on Twitter for you. In either case, that's about the only way you get them. So this isn't even put out there. They are letting us know here that there is going to be a reverse split. And this was just put out on February 14th. As you can see here in the corner in the state of Nevada, they filed for a reverse split of 1000 to one. That means for every 1,000 shares you have, you're going to get one share that'll be worth a thousand times more. So your 1,000 shares will be worth the same price as your one share. So if you have 10,000 shares, you're going to wake up one day and have 10 shares. Now they'll be worth the same amount of money initially. Once the bell goes off, there's a very good strong likelihood that it's going to fall. Why? Because lots of people woke up and saw their shares missing and they're angry, they're upset and they don't want to be in the company anymore and they will sell out of spite. They will get out at a loss and normally a week later or so you'll see the thing start to recover. So this has not been spoke about. Most people have no idea about this. They're talking about the merger which is speculation based on facts but this is facts not even speculated on. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. MXMG, six month, four hour chart. Lots of activity 
without explanation. I really don't know why she's doing what she's doing here because there was no news. It was just absolutely blank. But we had a low back here in July of 003 and she went up to over two cents. That right there was a 600% jump. She came down under the 50, hit another low here, took off again. And this was from 004 to almost five cents. 1,100% gains in that jump. Threw that away, has come all the way down here, and I guarantee you that is a low bubble when we come in on the five day and the 20 day, and she's got a bounce coming off of that as well. Let's take a look at the 20 day, one hour look. All right, she is very thinly traded, so you're not gonna get a lot of bars. She's bounced off that low bubble here of 004 up to just over two cents. So you're looking at 500% gains. Fell very quickly, and then today, just from this point right there, she's gotten up to here, which was a 37% gain. Doesn't look like a lot, but you can see she has a habit of big bounces, no doubt about it. Now, we haven't had one news press about a reverse merger, a merger, an acquisition. Nobody has said anything about that. Uh, once it comes out, I expect this to jump. I expect that to actually be something because they've not even had an announcement of a letter of intent. Normally, the letter of intent would have it jump big. And then when it closed, it would just be a little bounce. I don't know why that is. It just is. People like to hope and speculate more than deal with the facts. So, once a letter comes out, if it's a letter of intent, I expect this to really push up high. If it's just a letter that it's happened, it's probably still going to get a good bump. So I would keep MXMG on your list just for the letter and the bump, but keep in the back of your mind, maybe even the front of your mind. This has a 1000 to 1 reverse split coming and they won't give you any more forewarning. It's just going to happen. You'll wake up one morning and boom, it's a done deal. So if you can get in before the split, get out as fast as you can and take your gains, unless you don't mind having your stock cut by 1,000. All right, the last stock we're looking at is Sudi, S-U-T-I, Sudimco International, finished today at triple zero five. Yeah, I know. We never look at triple zeros. She went up 11% today. That is not much of a gain. It's probably from triple zero four to triple zero five, maybe even less than that. She's on the pink tier, but she's under limited. That means that she is late filing something. Once she files those late papers, she goes back to pink. But if she doesn't get him in on time and there is a time limit, she can be yanked off the open market and thrown into the experts. Now, this isn't delisted. It's time out. However, as far as you and I can, are concerned, it's nowhere land because we can't buy or sell the stock and we can't get to our investment until they file. Once they do and get caught up, they'll come back onto the open market. She has a verified profile and a transfer agent, so that all looks good, but they are a shell risk. A shell risk means that they're supposed to be reporting revenues, but they're not. Are they making revenues? Annually, no. Quarterly, no. So they're not even making revenues, which is a problem, no doubt about that. So what does this company do? Well, they were focused on CBDs and cannabis. They were selling this around the country and I don't know a lot about them because there's not a lot out there about them. However, they planned on going vertical. Now that means they wanted to cover every aspect of their business from seed to sale growing it, harvesting it, processing it, packaging it, trucking it, putting it in the stores and selling it and retailing it. They wanted to do it all. And I don't know how much of that they're doing, but the news today does add on to that concept plus some. And we're gonna get into that news, but it is a different circumstance that has me showing this to you. Something we haven't seen around here much of since September of last year. And it is that circumstance that can get this stock to jump. And I wanna bring it to your attention before it happens. So what was the relative volume around this company today? pretty good. We went from 36 million, 36 million on a, on our average day to 307 million. Now understand when you got a stock at triple zero, selling millions of shares is not that hard. You can get a million shares at triple zero one for a hundred dollars. Yeah. So 
In either case, we've got about nine times as much volume. Nine times isn't something to be overlooked. Her share structure, oh boy, I'd like to overlook that. Man, 3.5 billion shares in the float. Oh, that made my gut drop. We know our financials are empty and disclosures. I don't believe we're going to see anything here. Oh, I am wrong. Almost slipped my mind. You see this right here, this attorney letter with respect to current information. You need an attorney letter after you filed your financials if you are not auditing. If you don't have a CPA who's licensed and says these are factual, actual numbers, you're just giving us numbers, the best you can do is get a lawyer to say, well, I looked them over, they look good to me. He's not held liable, but he gives authority to it that they look legal. And you cannot get anything done without that attorney letter. But that's the last piece of the puzzle. That is why they're pink limited. Once this is accepted and this was put in on the 14th, today is the 22nd, it normally takes anywhere from one to 10 days. We're on the cusp. We're on the cusp right now. As soon as this goes pink, current, and it'll just change pink, the stock will probably jump. Just like that, it'll jump. And this could easily go to double zero one and you could make a hundred percent. It could do more. You never know about these pink current jumps. That and the expert jumps, which are even harder to catch than fish at night. So that's why I'm showing it to you. Now the piece of news that came out today <laughs> over and over again. You see the news? All of that news? It's the same. That's all today. 2222222. Look at that. 02222022. Jeez, that's kind of, uh, we'll go by that. But every single piece of news here with a different title. I went through them. I thought they might be different. They weren't different. It's the same piece of news. Let me see. I, I didn't go back any further because I was kind of overwhelmed by that. Uh, Pseudocom announces blockchain software acquisition and NFT developments. Oh, we're still going back. That's still today. Oh, come on. Uh, that's today. <sighs> okay, so we get back to uh, October here of 2021, and I don't see anything being mentioned about the NFTs. Let me show you the news. They really want you to see this. That's not it. That's it. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it with me here. Okay. They say that management recently acquired several software packages and programming to add and enhance their own secure and encrypted systems. Not to be outdone by Sudi's several sister companies. And I'm not sure what that means. Sudi will use these developed codes to launch its own set of NFTs and cryptocurrencies. However, Along with this new market space expansion, Sudi's management will continue to focus on setting up transactional relationships with merchant processing financial institutions, banks and traders, focusing on the marijuana and the CBD growing sectors of the economy. You still can't pay for your marijuana with a credit card. There's still a lot of hindrances to how you can buy marijuana. So. There are still lots of opportunities for companies like this to come up with ways to pay for it with cryptocurrency and other ways around the banking institutions. But they go on to tell you what I just told you. Recently, the company posted attorney's letter as to the current status on the OTC markets. The management anticipates to move to current status tier soon. And so do I. And the last thing they said, polishing their balls, on a special note, the management was able to retire several debt notes from previous owners and reduce the outstanding share count. So they're limiting shares, they're getting more value, they got the attorney letter out, which is probably going to push them to pink, and they've got this new uh, crypto NFT currency thing going on. There's not a lot of information you see as much as I see. So more will be coming, but what I'm looking at is that pink current status. When that comes out, it's just gonna be a fast jolt and you'll wanna grab it and get out. So let's go take a look at the chart and see what we can get. 
Sudi, S-U-T-I, that is a six month, four hour chart. Had a lot of activity. Can't give you a lot of information why, because I didn't dig into it that deep. I'm looking for a tear jump. She had a jump here, right? There's a bounce and she jumped here from about 0007 up to 21. That's 300% gain. Went fast, four days. For days it climbed and it fell fast on the other side right down to the 200. Took some time, then got another huge jump. This one went from a penny and a half up to three. Uh, is that right? Is that double zero? That's double zero. That's the, so that's only 150% only. <laughs> and then it went sideways for a couple weeks and then it really lost everything. Crashed through the 200 with no respect though. I see one huge jump there. That's about 100%. And kept coming down till she hit this low bubble of triple zero three all the way down from double zero three. So you're over a thousand percent down. Let's come in on the 20 day 20 or 20 day one hour. All right, looks like a picket fence. You know, it just goes up and down. There's no extra digit on the other side. This will go from five to six. It doesn't have to turn the extra digit on the odometer here. Now, when it gets to double zero, it'll have one digit to go through before it goes to the two. But down here, it goes from five to six to seven directly. Pretty much going straight across right now without anything to brag about. We can see she was back at seven at a high here. She hit seven again today and she fell back to five. She's on five. So really, I don't see the news as being a strong catalyst. NFTs and cryptocurrency are a big deal and I don't know much about it. I didn't do a lot of DD with this company, though I don't think they have a lot more to say. Even though they posted it 20 times, I didn't get any more information out of that. They do have some information out there about the marijuana and the CBD. I didn't do any looking into that either. I'm interested in the tear jump, but you might want to do more DD if any of that sounds interesting. So right now she's at her even keel, five. She's always at five, so now is a good buy. She could drop down to four, but uh, you know, four or five, she'll just be right back to five. Get half of it here and half of it down there if you're worried about her dipping. Well, I figure two, three more days, and this thing's gonna bounce to current. When it bounces, you could end up with one of those 100, 300% bounces. And as quick as it goes up, it does like to come down. So don't hang around. Take your gains. Don't look for the absolute most you can get. Don't look for the invisible ceiling. You get over 50% gains. You need to learn to take those. Rarely are you gonna leave 50% on the table. Sometimes you will, but if you get in the habit of always taking 50% and not looking for that ceiling, which always catches us, you're going to do better than most. Now that ran a little bit longer than I was thinking it would, but hey, I wanted to share information with you. I wanted you to see that just because a stock is at the top of the list, making the most gains doesn't mean it is the stock you need to play. You need to know why stocks are running. That helps. Is it a reverse split? Maybe it's not a surge and probably going to fall. Is it a catalyst or is it misunderstandings of the facts? People will invest for the wrong reasons, get it confused with another stock, don't understand that there is a reverse split coming with the reverse merger. And for goodness sake, if you're not going to at least keep up with the news and the catalyst, pay attention to those technicals. The technicals won't lie, they'll tell you when it's coming down and when it's going up. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.